Hi, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do a quick little review on the Polish MC1. Now, I do not know much of the history on this mask other than it was produced for civilians during the Cold War. It also might have been issued to soldiers during the Cold War as well. I'm not quite sure. Um, you can get these relatively cheaply from around anywhere from $20 to $40 depending on where you live. Maybe even cheaper if you are in, say, a former Soviet country or really anywhere that's not America. Now, starting with the um, assembly here, we have your intake valve and exhale valve. Uh, now, they integrated a voice diaphragm into the exhale valve here. Um, and what that is, is basically just this piece um, that fits into the exhale valve right here. Um, that is a metal mesh, and on the other side it has this um, kind of a cloth fuzzy material, and that just sits with the metal mesh going on the outside, um, and then you would just screw this cap on, um, and that's basically all there is to this kind of voice diaphragm. Now it is a plastic um, assembly here, and it's crimped on with this metal piece. Um, you can see the latch there, and there's a little piece of fabric under there to protect the rubber. Now the eye pieces are kind of like your standard GP5 eye pieces. Um, they're crimped on with metal. Now this one seems to be in pretty good condition around the eye condi uh, pieces. Sometimes you'll see a bit of rust forming around them. Um, say because of the way they were stored. Now the harness, uh, moving along to the harness here, it is six point harness, um, so two on the head, two on the sides, and two towards your neck. Um, these straps actually do work very well, as you can see, if it'll focus, okay, um, they are kind of this green cloth material, and they are nice and stretchy, and so makes this mask a lot more comfortable than, say, masks that have uh, rubber straps. Now. Moving on to the inside of the mask, I can get it folded over here. We have your eye pieces, and luckily enough, we have uh, tissue tubes. Um, what that means is um, it comes in through the intake valve, and then it comes out through these tissue tubes, blowing air onto the eyeglasses, uh, much like many other. Uh, communist designs for masks keeps it from fogging up and right here we have your exhale valve so very simple mask uh, this one these ones come in gray and um, olive drab green now just gonna put the mask on here as you can see it is a uh, mouse looking mask and they nicknamed it this because it looks like a mouse. Um, now moving on to the filter. Um, do not use these filters. Um, this is an MS4 filter. These also came in green and gray. This one is green. Um, this one seems to be still sealed. Um, but typically it would have a phaser sticker over each end. And that way you would know it has not been tampered with or anything. Now I haven't opened this filter yet, and I'm probably going to leave it that way because uh, these filters do contain chromium and maybe slight traces of asbestos, but mainly chromium. So do not use these filters unless you want to get lung cancer for the rest of your life, uh, and nobody wants that. So pretty basic filter, um, just charcoal and particulate. Um, that's all there is to say about that. Now this mask did come with the instructions on how to store it, but it is all in Polish, so pretty useless if you don't speak Polish, um, but that's pretty cool. Um, now I have some anti-fog paste that you would put on the inside of the lenses here. Um, and now this stuff is a pretty weird plastic it came in. Um, now it's kind of this petroleum looking uh, paste and it, uh, it smells 
kind of bad, but it's it's just kind of a weird material that they used for that. Um, and it also comes in this kind of like a Bakelite um, blue almost, uh, kind of roughly made. Now we're going to move on to the bag here. Uh, the bag's pretty simple. It's kind of this algae pattern. Um, it has this loop to go around your waist so it sways less. And then a pocket here. Now the kit, when I got it, didn't have anything in the pocket unfortunately. Not sure what would go in there. Um, but the straps here is a pretty way weird way of doing the straps. So basically you take this and you put it over um, this rolling pin part and then you put the, uh, the string forward and then kind of use it and you put it through here again um, this is the best way I've found to keep the bag shut um, and then what you're going to want to do is after you got this far you're going to want to take it through the rolling pin again and then just pull it upward. So you can see that. Um, and then it should stay shut after that. It's a little bit difficult to get it undone. That's pretty basic um, review of the bag as well. Now they are this kind of nylon material that could fray if you don't treat it properly. Um, but overall pretty decent bag. Now, we're just going to do a quick comparison as well here of a GP5 compared to an MC1. This is, of course, the famous Soviet GP5 um, compared to an MC1. Now, many people say that the GP5 is a much better starter mask um, than the MC1 because of the assembly here. Um, you have a metal assembly instead of a plastic assembly. Now, I do think that the MC1 is a much better mask than the GP5, the reason being um, it actually has decent straps instead of a hood style mask where you would need either a neck gaiter or some type of cloth on your head so it doesn't pull your hair out if you have hair over two centimeters. Um, and that's where straps come in handy. Now. Uh, the reason being I say this is because most people don't want to cut their hair just because they are collectors and or like wearing gas masks. Now that's about all there is to say about the MC1. Thanks for watching. Bye.